Now, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you exactly why women thrive off of chaos and emotional turmoil. And this is something that you have to understand at the deepest level because this is rooted in that woman's biology and psychology and hardwiring. Now, I think personally, this is one of the best marker board presentations that I ever created. And this is 100% going to help you have the leverage in the relationships and in the interactions that you actually have with women. Now, before we dive in, today's MBT Celeb Spotlight is from Ash. He goes, thank you, Casey, for the no BS. Only two weeks in and I feel like an animal. He goes, the funny thing about this is that this is helping me get women, but in reality, this is actually about turning yourself into a beast and women are icing on the cake. Hashtag game over. Fellas, that means once this video is done afterwards, I want you to go down below, you hit the link in the description, you check out MBT for masculine behavioral techniques. I put together a full length behind the scenes presentation for you and it's going to totally transform your life. But let's dive into today's video. Now in today's video, I'm going to be showing you why women thrive off nothing more than chaos and emotional turmoil. Okay, these are things that you have to understand at a deep level because this will go into that woman's hardwiring Okay, that is going to be the emotional levers that a man has to pull in order to keep that woman attached. So here's a newsflash. It doesn't matter how much money you make, how tall you are, or how jacked you are. If you fail these things, okay, and you start to remove the emotional psychological leverage that you had prior, you're going to be getting hit with tests, pullbacks, and a woman who no longer wants you. So here's what you have to understand going into this. Okay, women love drama. Women love turmoil. Okay, the asshole okay, or the bad boy or the player gives natural turmoil because he provides inconsistent behavior. See, consistency in all ways, shapes and forms, when a woman knows that you want her, this is the fastest way to not only bore her and turn her off, but this is also the fastest way to appear lower value. So what you gotta understand about the bad boy or the asshole is he puts himself first. He's out with his friends, he's out running the streets, he's out making money, he's out doing whatever the hell he wants, okay, and because of that, she can no longer get a read on him and she can't get a read on him because he's living life on his own terms. This is an attraction turn on. So she, that woman that is engaging with that guy, she can't pull back, okay, because he never pulls forward. Like you gotta understand this, a woman can only pull back from you if you pulled forward and you're showing that consistency. The second you show that consistency, here comes the pullbacks, here comes the tests. Here where she, here's where she wants to see how weak you're getting for her. Here's, wants, here's where she wants to see how booty whipped you are for her sex. I didn't write the rules, this is how women behave. And I've seen this from guys at all ages, all heights, all income levels, I've seen this with guys who are six foot seven, doesn't matter. You gotta understand this at a deep level, okay? Therefore, since she can't pull back because he never pulls forward, her emotions are now in flux 24 seven. Well, if her emotions are in flux 24 seven, here's what you have to understand that nobody is teaching you. To a woman, this is leadership, okay? Not picking where we're gonna go eat, okay? Not, not fixing the light bulb, not any of that. Like, those are good too and those are forms of leadership, but to a, to a woman, okay, this is, is leadership at the deepest level. Reason being is because this man is leading her emotions. Women see the world through the lens of emotion. Women see the world through the lens of feeling. If you can't do this, okay, you can be the highest ranked you know, general, it doesn't matter how good of a leader you are on paper, if you can't lead her emotions and she doesn't feel anything, the woman's going to exit, okay? So this is why she needs toxicity. Women need toxicity because women have nothing to focus on. The reason why women have nothing to focus on is because life has became very easy. Women don't need men. Okay, so women have their own money and their own jobs and they make their own money from working those jobs. Women have their living covered because people have houses, people have apartments, people have you know condos, people have associations that mow the lawn and mow the grass. Like women don't need men. Now on top of that, women also have security 24 seven. Okay, there's laws, there's home security systems, there is you know houses and general living is relatively safe in most neighborhoods. So. Despite that, okay, what you're gonna see is that modern day, people in all ways, shapes, and forms live an easy life. So women don't have anything to focus on. So all that's left is now the alpha fox side of hypergamy to pass her shit tests. Why are women looking for the biggest, baddest, strongest bad boy right now? It's because their living situation, okay, and their, uh, their ability to generate security for themselves is taken care of. Therefore, the only thing that provides excitement is chasing that bad boy's approval. That you're gonna have to understand this because here's the thing. Some of you might come down to me and you're like, well, that's not cool or that's not fair. I can't change the world and neither can you. You have to accept things for as is because you only have a limited amount of time on this earth, okay? 
It, like if you live to be 90 years old and you're 30 watching this right now, you, you got two thirds left. And the, it, from, from the, what I can see, the world isn't gonna get any easier for you just because you want it to. So if you're a man or if you're married or if you've been dating your girl for one year, two years, three years, here's what you're going to notice. You're gonna notice low sexual desire, you're gonna notice bitchy behavior, you're gonna notice nagging, and you're going to notice a woman who probably doesn't have interest in you. This is why I've told you on previous videos, if you're gonna enter into monogamy, if you're gonna enter into a committed relationship where you're not going to date multiple women, because that's the biggest kept secret for men today is that men think if you date multiple women, that's a turn off. In actuality, there's no greater turn on to a woman to make her stick and to make her stay in your life. Okay. Women create situations that don't need to be there. Consistency kills desire. You have to understand this at the deepest level. Consistency kills desire. The reason why I'm telling you this okay, is because men have a false idea of what being a leader is. Men are logical. Men use their logical brain. So you think, oh, leader, what are the things that come to a male's brain when they think leader? They think, well, logic. So they think, hey, you know, the bills are paid, the resources are there, I'm the strongest guy and I'm doing kickboxing and jujitsu and I can protect, therefore I'm a leader. This is what men think. This is a man's idea of leadership. However, this is not a woman's idea of leadership. Truthfully, she doesn't care about any of this for all of the reasons that I discussed on this side of the whiteboard. A woman's idea of leadership is leading her mental state and her emotions. And this is why I'm hammering this down as much as I can on you. Self-improvement is not the answer. Those of you watching all these gurus on the internet telling you to make more money and to hustle, and these guys are also telling you to do all of this shit where you are on your purpose, those are great things and those are cool traits for your own self-improvement journey. But I'm gonna tell you this straight up, this is not going to help you attract any more women and keep them. This may help you get your foot in the door where women maybe have initial interest, but in no way, shape, or form, is this going to move the psychological levers in a woman's emotional brain to create the urgency, the fear of missing out, okay, the psychological dependence on chasing your validation and your approval that she needs that only the asshole or the bad boy can give her? You cannot ignore what women are actually attracted to because women live the life through emotion. That means they're up here. Okay, for women, that emotion is through fantasy. That emotion is through the what if factor of if they can lock that guy down. If you ignore those things, you're going to be left for a, a guy who's actually demonstrating those capabilities in her head. So here's what you gotta understand, and this sucks about the masculine experience. Masculine in all ways, shapes, and forms equals routine. Consistency and improving and doing the things you wanna do. However, routine equals no arousal. Arousal through a woman is only created through urgency, sexual desire, okay, and having a need to sleep with you because of your inconsistent behavior. She's hoping she can leverage that sex appeal to potentially lock you down. Now, let's recap this one more time. Masculine equals routine. Routine equals no arousal. No arousal equals that guy's boring, and now she exits. So I'm gonna give you a great example of this. If Drake, the, the, the singer, okay, if Drake was married or if Drake was in a committed relationship, if he's grinding out an album and he has to work every single day and that woman's living in his home and she sees him five, six, seven days a week and she's living there, okay, what's gonna happen is he will get hit with the same shit you get hit with even though he's a millionaire with status. So eventually that woman's gonna look at him and fold her arms like this and say, you're gonna go down to the studio again? Yeah, that's all you do? Yeah, you're, you're just gonna go sit down there for another 10 hours, huh? That's it? And then she's gonna turn her back to him and walk off. And he's gonna go, but uh, 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 the, the album's coming out and I gotta do this. And she's gonna sit there and now give him the cold shoulder. That's what happens. That's what happens when you show a woman consistency. I don't give a fuck who you are. I don't give a fuck how much money you make. That's what women do. Now, next up, okay? You might be saying, well, Drake has status and Drake has resources. Drake has money. Okay, Drake has a yacht. Drake could have a 60 foot yacht, a whole, a whole bus full of uh, waiters and uh, butlers waiting on him, cooking five star dinners. That woman goes on that yacht, uh, let's say three weeks in a row. Uh, that third week comes around, she's going, same yacht again. I'm kind of bored. Don't you ever want to do anything else besides just sail the ocean? Okay, you can't win. You need to accept this shit and you need to let go. You cannot accept the shit and you need to let go. That yacht can be 100 foot, that yacht can be $100 million. By week three, she's going, I'm kind of bored of this yacht. I'm kind of bored of that. I've already ate this steak dinner on this yacht with this same butler serving me and we've already listened to this same music. Really, this is all you can come up with? This is what that chick's gonna say. 
You understand that you can't outwork hypergamy. You understand that you cannot, you cannot self-improvement your way out of this. Those of you on your, your those of you on your whole self-improvement grind thinking one day uh, God is just going to donate you and give you this amazing virgin princess who comes to you and is a good girl and likes to sit on the couch and watch the exact same Netflix reruns every single day with you and sit there and kiss your ass and be nice to you. You gotta understand that that is a fairy tale and that woman is gonna get bored of you after two weeks. So once again, those of you who want to maintain the attachment, those of you who want a woman consistently seeing you so you don't have to re-up your rotation or so you don't have to re-up the girl that you're seeing every two weeks, this is the shit that you have to learn. I can't change this. You can't change this. All you have to do is accept this. So keep in mind, we're not done yet. I got a whole nother half of this damn presentation to tell you. So here is why women get turned on when you do two things. If a woman's starting drama, if a woman's acting bitchy, if a woman's acting cold like this, women get turned on when you do two things and two things only. Either number one, you shut that shit down and you shut that, that shit down quick or number two, you don't even care. Now in just a second, I'm going to show you why number two is even more powerful and this is actually the most powerful thing that you can do because your masculine indifference proves to her that you, your sexual market value is far superior to hers. We're gonna save this for, for a second though. First, we gotta address number one, shutting that shit down. If you're with a girl monogamously and committed to her, could be a wife, could be long-term living girlfriend, doesn't matter. If you shut this shit down, here's what it does do. It does show that you have frame Okay, you're setting the frame, the expectation, okay? It also tells her to knock the shit off and that it's not gonna be tolerated. And what this is really signaling to her is gonna be a behavior check. Why is this important? Because it shows you have boundaries and stipulations in the relationship. This is very good to have. What this hopefully, now I say hopefully, because this isn't always the case. Sometimes a lot of these women will still draw that argument out for two, three, four, five, six hours or two weeks on top of that, hoping that she can break you. So keep in mind, just because you set that frame and you wanna tell yourself you're that masculine badass leader who sets the expectation, she's still testing for one thing. Is he weak enough to stay attached where he could not walk away? Hopefully, and I, this is a big hopefully. Keep in mind, this is not a guarantee. Hopefully, these things signal to her that you have the strength to walk away if she keeps this up. A lot of times, they will call your bluff. How do they call your bluff? They call your bluff by what you do in the bedroom post-sex. What that means, every handhold, every kiss on the forehead, every, every validational seeking handhold that you give when you're on that walk, okay, hoping that you can skip like a, like a prince and princess and eat Hershey's kisses, all of that shit is validation seeking behavior. Meaning what you're doing is you're opening yourself up to being vulnerable to potentially her seeking insecurities where she's going to crack down on you. I'm gonna tell you this, you shutting that shit down, if you've been in the relationship longer than probably four or five or six months, she's gonna not, she will not fold at that first instance. She will keep pushing that envelope. Now, this is why what you have to do is you have to remove yourself. The only way a woman can respect you is if she knows that you can walk away. This is why what happens when you get married is you're now handcuffed, you are not able to walk away. You not holding that psychological leverage, fastest way to kill desire. So number two, the way that I prefer, okay, that's why I told you, you can never pull forward to, be, to begin with. She can't pull back and test you if you never pull forward. Second you pull forward, to some degree you're fucked and you're making your life much harder. Because keep in mind, women today will have sex with any guy for any reason that they feel like. Just because you committed and you're giving more investment, that doesn't mean that you're going to be getting more and more of her sexual intimacy, okay? The reason being is because consistency kills desire. If you wanna enter into consistency with seeing a woman and monogamy and being in that relationship and hand-holding with her, you're gonna work three times as hard to maintain that woman's interest while getting five to 10 times less sex. The reason being is because the urgency has disappeared, she starts to crave that bad boy. This is why number two, I prefer at an even deeper level. You don't even care. The reason why this is more powerful, you gotta understand this, is because she wants to be put in her place. Women know the power of their beauty and she tests your internal guts of the man. She tests your, inter your internal guts, not your bench press. The way that you show the most rock solid fortitude Okay, is by you not caring. So I wrote this in really small letters, but stick with me because this is important. You not caring is the most powerful. And the reason being is because a woman wants you to invest. A woman wants you to invest financially. A woman wants you to invest with your commitment. A woman wants you to invest emotionally. A woman wants you to invest spiritually. 
Okay, a woman desires that or she's going to tell you that. However, the second that you do, you open yourself up to added tests, added vulnerability, you start to put yourself in the potential provider category that she's looking for because you're providing all this emotional support and security. What's going to happen is that hypergamous instinct is now going to sexually crave an alpha who doesn't give those things. So by you not caring, this is the most powerful. Women want you to invest. By you not caring at all, you're not investing in her emotionally. This is gonna drive her fucking wild. This is going to piss her off. You're gonna understand that when a woman starts to realize after a few minutes that she can't argue with a brick wall because that brick wall doesn't give one fuck, that's the most powerful thing that you can do. So women want your care. This guy doesn't even need to care at all. So this guy doesn't have to invest to lead. This guy up here with number one, he has to invest in her to lead, okay? Now he's getting hit with these tests and these pullbacks, his life is even more difficult. However, here's what you gotta understand. What angers the most to a woman, the reason why number two is the most powerful by you not even caring, what angers a woman most, what gets her so pissed off, so emotionally invested, read this word for word with me, when she knows that he can lead, but he chooses not to. Think about that for a second. I want you to think about this in reverse. Think how women, okay, are conditionally feminine today. They choose to exercise when they're feminine or not. They choose to exercise personality traits when they're going to be feminine towards a man. Think how women are conditionally feminine and it gets the man's emotions involved, okay? What I mean by that is she, she's hot on you one day, which means she likes you, she's loving, she's touching, she cooks for you, she gives you a kiss on the forehead. Oh, that feels good. She's feminine, okay? She's cooperative, she's compliant. She's submitting to your frame and she likes being with you. That feels so good. But think how women are conditionally feminine and how it gets the man's emotions involved. What happens the next day when she wakes up and all of a sudden she chooses to nag you, she chooses to test you, she chooses to start acting bitchy? What's gonna happen? Your emotions get drawn in. The reason why your emotions get drawn in is you start becoming insecure. You say, well, is she fucking someone else? Well, is she doing this because I'm no longer man enough? Is she doing this to try to test my strength? Is she doing this because she's losing attraction? Did we have sex last night and I didn't make her come so she's upset so now she wants to find a different guy who can? You gotta understand that women know that you're gonna think this way. You can't fall to it. This is a big psychological test. All this is is a bunch of bullshit. I'm gonna explain why. Think how, a woman, think how women are conditionally feminine and it gets a man's emotions involved. What you gotta know, okay, the bad boy has the greatest superpower, okay? The biggest superpower is he knows and he understands that it's the same for women. So what I mean by that, let's take a step off the gas, let's take a step off the throttle for a second, okay? The bad boy or the asshole, he can lead. The woman knows that he could choose to be like number one, where he shuts that shit down and he emotionally invests, but he's choosing not to. So let me give you an example of what I mean. The bad boy or the asshole can lead, okay? She sees he doesn't care to though. Okay, you know that your wife could cook for you and give you a back massage at night, but it pisses you off that she doesn't. See, that's the thing. The woman sees the masculine traits that you possess. This is your greatest superpower. Please listen to me very closely. The woman sees the masculine traits that you have inside of you. By you purposefully choosing to not display them and to invest those masculine traits into that woman specifically, that is your greatest superpower because she sees he can and he doesn't. Just like how if you see that a woman could cook for you, could rub your back, but she doesn't, it pisses you off. She's choosing to not exercise her femininity at you or towards you. This pisses a person off and it goes for both men and women. So this, when you choose not to invest those masculine characteristics of leadership into her, this makes her feel not good enough. What this does is this conceals your sexual market value. See, the biggest thing you got to understand if you're not a celebrity, if you're not a professional athlete, if you're not a professional rap star or rock star, you gotta understand that you need to conceal your sexual market value. You conceal your sexual market value by passing her tests and by not getting emotionally invested. So a woman, until she starts interacting with you, you gotta understand this, if you walk down the street, a woman has no idea if you're a six, a seven, an eight, a nine, or a 10. She might know it based off of attraction, like, oh, that's a 10 out of 10 attractive guy, but what happens after, 60 to 120 seconds when that guy has to work his mouthpiece. She's gonna get a very quick understanding quickly of where he is on the hierarchy of male sexual market value. She's gonna be able to see how he handles tests, how nervous he is. Okay, these are direct indicators of the type of women or the type of caliber of women that that man is used to pulling. The last thing a woman wants to think is I'm hotter than he is or I'm out, or excuse me, I'm out of his league. 
If a woman thinks that it's over. So the bad boy or the asshole can leave, but he chooses not to this okay, She sees this, that he doesn't care. This pisses her off. This makes her feel not good enough. Now what happens is she starts to fight for that man's approval. Well, the more she fights for that man's approval, you got to understand this. Once her feelings are involved, she throws all logic out the window. Like once her feelings are involved where she's attached to that man and that man's approval, this to a woman is love. This is not love how you've seen it on TV. This is not love how you've seen it on Valentine's Day. To a woman, this obsessive, compulsive, like, does he like me or not feeling? This to a woman is love. This is why when they say a woman cannot be with two men at the same time and love both of them, this is why. Her feelings fixate on a specific guy. And what will happen is even if other men are quote unquote higher value in her inbox, she literally closes them off because she has eyes for a specific guy right now. So women, Okay, we'll never treat you good just because, just because you say so, just because you're Drake, just because you're Leonardo DiCaprio, just because you're Chris Brown, just because you make a million dollars a year, just because you have a 100 foot yacht, they will never treat you good just because. They only treat you good when you maintain the psychological leverage and the power over their emotions and that's it and that's final. You need to take losses. I'm gonna tell you this. So all of you right now, you're probably in a position the position you're in that you're feeling emotionally right now, because I've been told in the comment section, I teach this and I break this shit down better than anybody's ever seen. You feel a lot of things right now. And I already know that you feel shame because you had past instances where you failed. You feel regret right now because you actually see that you've made probably a lot of mistakes because you had false preconceived notions of love. You also probably feel some bit of anger. Okay, either towards yourself for not handling things right, or you even feel anger at the, the past women that you've dated because you feel like you weren't treated properly. All of these things are normal feelings and normal, normal emotions right now. But I'm gonna take that pressure off you for a second because you gotta understand something. All of you, and I mean all of you, myself included, every Hollywood celebrity included, the real estate agent in your hometown, the lawyer in your hometown, the doctor who you see once a month for a checkup, every man on planet earth, you need to take losses. You need to have that, that, that eight, nine or 10 who you viewed as a hot, hot, hot girl in your life. You need to have her pull back and exit. You need to go through this shit. Here's why you need to go through this shit. Number one, men are made. So you are not going to come into this world with wisdom and power that is built and that's fortified. It's fortified through your losses and being smart enough to reflect on them instead of being a dumb motherfucker who just says, Oh, let me chalk that up as an L and you know what? I'm going to go on to the next one. And then that guy does the same shit. That's not being a man. Being a man is fortifying yourself through wisdom. So you need to take losses. What I'm trying to tell you is that you need to break some eggs to make an omelet. If you want an omelet, see, here's the thing. Every single man, every man out there, you claim you want a 10, you claim you want a hot girl. You claim you want a submissive, beautiful woman to love you. Everybody claims they want that on paper, but nobody is willing to take losses and break eggs. Nobody's willing to take six months to a few years to go through losses and experience what women are actually like, even potentially have your emotions ran through hell. So that way you can grow from it. See, no, nobody actually wants to grow. So you got to relax a little bit. Every man on planet earth. Okay. You're going to have to take losses. You have to break those eggs, those eggs that you broke that didn't turn out scrambled and they got burnt. Dude, you got to understand that that was part of your experience. That was your God given journey that you probably had to go through. You have to see that because God's going to test you just like a woman will test you. If you want to make an omelet, you're going to have to break some eggs. So what I can tell you is you have to stop trying to control everything. Just let go, let go. Here's what you got to understand. You got to let go. You got to just take it easy. There's a, the, the, the fit, my favorite movie is fight club in the movie of fight club. There's that scene where they're driving, right? And Tyler's going to crash his car. And he says to him, he goes, he goes, this is why I burnt down your condo. Right. And the other dude's eyes get super wide, but he goes, stop trying to control everything. He goes, you got to let go. You got to let go of all that past bullshit that you're holding. So if you think like, here's, you got to understand every single woman that it's went south with, whether it be you fucked up or she fucked up, it doesn't matter. It deepened your wisdom. And the reason why you can't fault yourself for this is because you live in a reality that was constructed for you. This is why the, the biggest thing that I, that I, and I'm going to, I've never done, I've never really made a video this long and I've never rambled like this, but I'm going to, for a second, here's what kind of pisses me off the most about a lot of like dating coaches or content creators on the internet or a lot of the people in like the masculinity space. What I don't like about it is they, they, they kind of like, 
they make men feel as if it's their fault. So here's the problem is they put everybody in a bubble and then they label this bubble weak men. So they say, oh, it's, it's weak men's fault that this happens in the world. It's weak men's fault that they can't stand up to women. It's weak men's fault that men have no power in these relationships. It's weak men's fault. But see, I disagree because if a guy hears this, first off, there's some issues with this. Number one, very rarely does any man look at themselves in the mirror and say, man, I'm weak. Like it's hard to even associate with this because it's like a girl left you. The last thing you're going to think to yourself is I'm weak. You start searching for answers. The problem with this is because since men are so logical, majority of the guys that read all of this stuff that I just wrote down on this whiteboard, don't even consider that weakness because here's the thing. You can bench 400 pounds. You can crush it in the business world and make 20 million bucks a year. You can have celeb status. This guy didn't think he's weak. This guy probably thinks he's a social savage who crushes it. But a woman comes into the picture, right? There's an ignorance. There's a learning deficit that he hasn't overcame. This is like, this isn't even weak men's fault. The problem, okay, the, the reason why everybody's in this bubble, it's not about being weak or not. It's about how you're programmed. So if all of these men, if, if millions or billions of men, okay, have watched this sort of TV, with this narrative of love, okay, told in their groups or told by their friends, their pastors, their priests, their peers, that this is how women are. Listen to the, the music, okay, pumped on the television about love and emotionalism. Can you really blame them? Like, I, to me, this isn't weakness. To me, you're a victim of your own circumstance, right? So what I mean by that is like, if I was raised by, if my mom was a general practitioner and my dad was a surgeon, there's a high chance I might be a doctor when I get older. Cause that's my circumstance. Everyone's a victim of their own circumstance. For most men, this is your circumstance. So I'm trying to tell you this to take some of the pressure off because it doesn't make you weak. It's not weak men's fault. For example, that like you're in this situation and I don't want you to even associate with that. And this is the problem that I have with the entire self-improvement grind. So every single guy goes, well, I'm going to go make more money. I'm going to make a million bucks a year. I'm going to bench press more. And now this is going to be fixed. And this isn't going to be fixed at all. You might be able to initially talk to a hotter woman. You might be able to go on a few more dates with a hot woman. You might even be able to have sex with her, but this doesn't maintain the attachment. The only thing that maintains the attachment is all of the stuff that I just taught you on this whiteboard today. And the reason why you have to understand this is because there's levels to this game. As I like, there's levels to this game and your sexual market value is only revealed based off how you pass these tests. This is why I'm teaching you to conceal your SMV, to conceal your interest level, just like a woman does. Okay. A woman conceals her interest level. She can have sky high interest when she's texting you, but watch what happens. She might make herself less available. She might wait four or five, six hours to reply. She might want you so badly, but look how good at women are at using that manipulation to conceal their interest level. You have to do this. You have to do these things or you're going to be left for a different man who does. If you like this video, I want you to hit the like button, comment and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.